So 30, 38, No Invite Podcast Season 2. I ain't got to tell you who the fuck I am because you know who I am already. And if you don't know, I'm Blaze. Now you know. Now you know. And who we got in the building right now? <laughs> hola, hola. We got hey, Patty. Y'all know. Y'all already know we got Patty in the building. The P Warrior. The P. I the, hate you so the, much. The, 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 all her P yeah, maniacs. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, brother? Say your prayers, your vitamins, and your minerals and shit. <laughs> That's that's Patty right there, and we got that guy. By the way, we we emphasize that guy because that's how that's that's how he wants to go by because he's that guy. He's the guy. Oh, did right. you guys hear about the? Is Joe it the guy Rogan? or the dude? I forgot already. It could be whatever. It's like you know how there was that guy on the couch. I'm the guy this. <laughs> he's the guy on that <laughs> couch right there. <laughs> he's that guy on the podcast. Yeah. What's that you were that? talking? What's that you were showing me right now? The Joe Rogan dis when they said Joe Rogan is only five three. <laughs> Wow. So you haven't seen that? I seen it, but I didn't know what it was about. I just looked at it. I thought it was some cornball shit. Like, it is. Hey, he did, like, some white no, girl totally says, told me that he was going to marry me. So it was something. I don't know. That's what I thought. That, it was, excuse me for No, that's what I, I, I'm not sure about the exact story, but I heard it was like in like, had some relation to like a, a, a marriage proposal as well. And it says, Joe Rogan is literally only five foot and three inches. That's what they wrote, like in the sky. Who you think paid for that? You think like Logan Paul or somebody, somebody who really somebody? hates him? Somebody, somebody who- got no, nah, no. Nah, I'm not gonna say hates him. I think that's just some petty shit. Like somebody who's stupid ass petty. They got money and be like, you know what? Because it's because they um, wasn't there just a UFC fight, right? Yes. And, and, and yeah, it was just a UFC fight. So it was obviously around this time, if not the weekend, correct? Uh, <laughs> well, I'm not sure in the details. Well, had a lot of like talk around him in general. Because I know, but I'm saying, the but if you're going to troll somebody, you troll them when they're making their money or you troll them when they're when trying they're to have a moment. When yeah, they have some when they're trying to have a moment, you, you, you hit them with that. You know what I'm saying? So that's what kind of feels I like. I was like, what? Why? Yeah, I was like, it's either somebody who has money and doesn't give a fuck, and they're just like, hey, I'm gonna do this, or somebody that really hates him and put a lot of effort into that. Wikipedia says he's five seven. So. <laughs> we all know, we all, hey, we all know now how much stock fucking Joe well, Rogan. We, I want to know how much stock he owns in fucking Wikipedia. Is what so I want to know. So the sky told me that he was literally five three. So yeah. I don't know who to believe. God, literally, God <laughs> told me because the, the sky. sky written, do I believe Wikipedia? God told me different. No, I don't go against God. It was written in the sky, right? Joe Rogan is Anyways, five that's hilarious three. though, and uh, whoever no did that is extra petty. Wrong. We'll have to start having the petty awards too at the end of the year. You know, we're already gonna do the finesse awards, like, like the Dave Chappelle skit with the hater. What exactly. is the hater awards? The hater, that it was the play hater award. There yeah, you go. The but we need to have the petty awards. He needs to the, do that the one. Petty awards. Oh my goodness. And it's gonna be crazy because it's gonna be. Um, I'm gonna use my first name because I'm gonna be the like the the announcer. Whatever, you know, or the host, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but then I'm going to go on stage when I'm supposed to go on and just be like, I'm Blaze, man. Fuck that dude. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm being petty towards myself and shit. You know, so I, I'm, I'm taking over this award show. <laughs> don't call me. Don't call me by that name. Didn't they do that too on one of those skits? I think they did. I don't fucking know. Wayne, Wayne Brady stole the show one time. Yeah. Uh, he stole his no, own he show? No, he stole. Wait, he wait, stole wait. a few shows. Like, it was, it was almost yeah, like. Two, two episodes? I think it was. I think it was when he dipped off. Yeah, I really think it was when he dipped off well, because they, they still had rights to his work, but he couldn't be on it. You know? Oh my goodness! I'm, That's right. Oh my god! You know he was on his training day shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we in this thing though. So we got that guy. We got the guy. We're just gonna call him the guy from now on until he. You know what I'm saying he's in, he's in here. He's in attendance, and it's the known by podcast, and we moving, Patty. And you know, you know, how was your week though? How, talk to me. Talk it was good. Here. It was a very good week. Um, very busy. Um, so I just want to remind everybody, you know, when you get really busy, and that's what's starting to happen because everything's opening back up, and things are kind of coming back with a vengeance, to make sure you take some time to whatever you need to do for yourself to make sure you're okay. Yeah. So that's what I've been trying to do. Um, and that doesn't mean masturbation, too. It just means, <laughs> oh, my God. It's like where did, shit that's actually Why did that music. come up? Like, oh, why no. is that the... You talking happen? to somebody's been in jail, so like, like you know, when you when you truly get some time alone, you're silly somewhere. I was talking somewhere, about being busy, and, and, and they ain't no. How did it get like, to this you know I mean? spot right I, now? I'm just saying, like, when you, it's rare to get time alone, some people use their time alone for other things. Who are you to tell anybody what to use their time I alone did, on? I'm not. I'm asking you how the conversation got on that subject. That was so random. It never left. 
It's always been I was there, talking Patty. about just some self care. <laughs> but what, to each its own. Whatever anybody does, like, yeah. hey, I'm not. I'm bills. not here to judge. I want everybody to be able to be themselves. I'm just wondering why you went left like that. Like, it never left, Patty. Like I said, it's always been here. It's always been there. He went left because it's not right. Shit. He'll never go right. You know, but so so you've been busy, and what have you been doing to maintain your? What have you been doing to maintain your? Um, your 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 schedule, I guess, because you know, like you said, everybody has something that they do. So, what have you been doing for yourself to maintain to, my schedule? Or to maintain, like, well, to it's because just... you're busy, but like you said, to take time time out for yourself to, you know, get your wusa on or whatever. I fucking... haven't yet since like everything got busy. I haven't yet, so that's why I'm like trying to like like I'm telling myself as well, like I need to ensure like I put some time aside. So I'm just gonna take a day where I just like. I make the decision where I'm not doing anything unless I want to do it, and I'm going to do what I need to do to make sure that my mental's good. I agree. So, I agree. You always got to take time out for yourself, basically, is what you're so saying. So I can regroup. Just yeah. who, however you function. Some people don't need it, you know? Everybody, some people do. And I just think that whatever you need, you should just be able to be yeah. open. Yeah. And yeah. That's why yesterday when they're like, we're going to knock on your door, I was like, I was like, no, nah, don't do that. Just text her. Thank I was you. Like, I don't do that because you know what? She won't answer the door. She'll be staring dead at you through the fucking window. And, and, and just because you didn't call and announce yourself, say you was on your way, she'll, she won't answer that shit. So you, let's just save ourselves a heartache and just, just text her first. She'll appreciate that more. And oh my God. Her, you know, play a little religion at her door. She'll be like, you know what? I'm nobody home. Exactly. I kind of. <laughs> I love how like well you kind of know me. <laughs> and I, I mean, I've known you for a while, so it's like, it's like, it's like now to me, it's about maximizing. Thank you for the that, time. cause that's dead <laughs> on, bro. Like that's like. What do you mean? I didn't heard you say that shit dead in my face. Like I, I was fucking. Yeah, I didn't told I you. I was like, you're lucky know, I ain't pop up. Yeah. You know I'm a friend. You know I'll, just, I'll, I'll tell it to your face and then I'll say it again. Like. <laughs> well, that's why. You know. What I'm Meanwhile, saying. you're at the door. She's the, the blinds are closing just a little bit more. I didn't tell you to come over. You didn't call. She's like, she's like that. You know, like. I would never do that to you. Take any detective movie scene. But some people don't mind scene. that. Everybody's different. Yeah. Yeah, everybody's different. So Take every like, detective movie scene in, in a movie that you've seen where the detective closes the blind cellar slowly. That's fucking Patty. When you're like at her door you and so you don't fucking much. announce yourself you're on your way, the blinds close hella slowly. She goes, lays on her bed with her shoes on <laughs> and, and just planks with face up and she just acts like face everything's, down. everything's okay. It's face down. Everything's okay. Stares at her watch. And just waits for the noise to stop, and then she resumes whatever she's doing. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh fuck oh that! Oh my gosh! So that's too much interaction for Patty. She's like, fuck that shit. So everybody's different, and we all, mm-hmm. you know, require different things for us to make sure that we keep our sanity. So, like, I just want to remind everybody and remind myself, like, do what you need to do, and don't feel guilty. Make sure you're good, so you can keep continuing. Yeah, definitely. I feel lighter. Please. Definitely, no, definitely because especially so, now, like even even us, and I'm pretty sure everybody has noticed it. Now that uh, things are starting opening up, and California should be opened up like in a couple of days or whatever. Now, um, and, and who knows if it's gonna be truly opened up? And I don't mind whatever. Like, excuse me, what you need the ashtray? You, you can say it, Patty. You know this is the podcast. They know we smoke. You know what I'm saying? For all y'all that don't know, I'm passing the ashtray so the ashtray could get passed to 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 Patty so she could ash the joint. All right, so. Back to what we're saying though, but now shit is opening up, and I know everybody sees it, notice it, more traffic, more bullshit, dealing with more people, just in general, more people that are acting like it's it's all good, you know what I mean, and it ain't all good, I still, even before pandemic, I always needed six feet, so I just hope people realize, just because we're, that's like, you know, when you ain't had nothing in a while, then you overdo it, it's like, that's nah, bro. Things are coming back in like, yeah. with like, nah, what, like what I'm saying is, is of... don't don't overdo the space thing though. Keep that consistent, man. <laughs> a lot give, of give me fucking six feet, por favor, every time I'm walking around and shit. So, you know, and I'll do the same. Trust me, I'll go out of my way to get out of your way. You feel me? Just make sure you're doing the same thing. Don't try to run me off the road. Or I hate when I'm jogging and shit and people see me coming and I'm not trying to like run right through them or split the crowd. I'm not trying to be around them. They could easily like move to one side right. and I'll move to the other so I could get around them. But they hold the whole shit off. <laughs> that should be making me hella mad. I'm like, come on, bro. I'm like, I don't all... like the inconsideration I, either. I teach, teach you like a middle school, you know, hallway. Kind of real fast. Yeah. Wow, Try to shoulder check me and shit. Yeah. You got me fucked up. I, ch- I checks back. Say <laughs> it with your chest. Say it with your chest. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, you know, so... 
You're right. You're right. I agree with that. And, and, and since we got the guy here, hey, the guy, man, um, how did you um, how did you feel about last last week being on the uh, podcast? Uh, well, let's just say I'm a pretty strict grader. You know, I'm kind of hard on things, so. You know, when I like measure how fast I am, I do it by NFL standards, where I am slow as hell and probably, you know, have no business being anywhere. So that's kind of how I felt first stepping out, you know, and being out here. But so basically, what he's saying is being entirely too harsh on himself. Cause it's, like, <laughs> it's his first fucking time doing this shit, and I don't expect fucking. You know what I'm saying? DJ Khaled or fucking Johnny Carson to pop on the mic. You know what I mean? <laughs> but no, I mean, like we said earlier, you know, it's just about your comfort level. Like, like we all have, like, how we, how me and Patty get down for y'all on the podcast, this is how we are in real life. We talk that shit. We talk about all kinds of music, culture, all, you know, whatever moves. And it just so happens we say some funny shit. That's why when I heard Patty, I was like, bro, you for sure got to be on this motherfucker with me. And it's the same thing with you. When off, off, uh, off microphone, we having the most hilarious comedy uh, uh, fucking conversations and I just feel like if once you get comfortable enough, and it's just about getting more reps, you know, I'm like anything else, if we're gonna go you football. If we're gonna go football metaphors, you're getting a couple more reps, you're running a couple routes extra, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, and as soon as you get that experience, you know what I mean, you'll 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 be all right. You'll you will you'll be happy with you. Now, I don't know how you treat yourself though, because Patty is a perfectionist and she demands everything. She demands the best from herself. Excellent. So even now she says, no, this ain't good enough. And I'm kind of like that, but I know how to give myself a break too and just be like, all right, bro, you, you good, man. You're going to be all right. You know what I'm I saying? So, set for settle for anything less. You know, more. You got you to put that bar up there and, you know, like you can't go backwards, man. Getting better or getting worse. Never stay the same, right? Totally agree. And I, I'm with you on that. You got to have a bar, but you can't also be too hard on yourself. You could be hard in, like, striving for what you want. But, you know, like, um, having some understanding of the degree of difficulty of shit. People take shit like this for granted. Some people are just naturals. Some people are not. I'm not I was by, by no means a natural when it came to this. I, I love making music. But as far as like getting on the microphone and, 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 and conveying my thoughts and saying things, psh, far from it. So it's like, because it's a different thing. You're kind of on the spot, you know what I'm saying? And where we come from, all of us in general, we have a, a certain guard up, you know what I mean? And it's like, while we're, we could let our guard down with each other, the microphone represents something else. And we all know that it's like now it's being captured. So what I say here will be heard again and again, but not just us, but by whoever else decides to listen to it. So it kind of puts you on the spot. But once you get comfortable enough, man, and they get that real piece of that conversation, it's a wrap. I think I want to announce it here. I don't know if she's going to take, um, if she'll take the uh, the position or not, but Ann is probably going to be a, a full-time member on, on the podcast. Everybody give it up for Ann. I'm going to put some sound effects over here. Don't trip. Don't trip, Ann. I got you. I got the sound effects in the crowd and all that shit for you. But, um, you know what I'm saying? Anne is definitely going to probably be a full-time member. She's the most motivated out of everybody. I'm, I'm going to keep it real. A lot of people cat it. A lot of people, they didn't, what's it called? Um, they didn't take it seriously. And, and that's okay because it's just a podcast. This is like a, an investment in your time and, and hopefully in something that uh, could, you know, further benefit you later on down the road. And it's, and it's a creative thing too. So it's like mm -hmm. for us, it's, it's, a, it's an outlet. But um, Anne really wants to do it. She really want to take part in it. And she... Um, she, like I said, she was the most motivated and with it. So uh, we're going to be upgrading real soon, equipment stuff. We're going to be able to do the panel thing, which I think is fucking dope. I've been waiting to right. do that. To initially, my initial vision for the No Invite That's was exciting. to be a panel, at least two main guests and, a, and, and maybe, I mean, two main uh, hosts and at least one or two guests at all times. So that's kind of where we're, the direction we're going now. We haven't had that mic capability. And it kind of sucks because... I think group shit is where it's at. The group chat is where it's really at. That's why that's why people's group chats be hella lit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because everybody's perspective you get four different perspective on one thing, some fucking funny oh shit's gonna happen. Goodness. You know what I mean? And to me I'm all about the laughs, you feel me? You know what I'm saying? You gotta laugh, baby. Pick yourself up, slap. And just keep in mind, a lot of the successful people out there, it's uh, they weren't the most talented, but they worked the hardest. And they work hard work while And they knew how to put the right people said. together. Or they just work really hard at it. Well, yeah, and see that all goes for years together. Or and that, a while, either or, and that, the no. case may be like so. Don't ever feel like. But Chas, you're both absolutely right like when it comes to that. You can't do it because as long as you put in the time and the effort, then that work is going to show up. It's, it's like they say when opportunity meets preparation. Itself. See, the the thing is, is that 
whether you are doing this or you just stumbled onto it, but if you're doing it for a while, that's your time you're prep, you're preparing. You're sharpening your blade. Right. You're getting ready for when the opportunity lands on you that you're that you're able to hit the shit running. See, a lot of times people, you know, they are full. They got they got super access to opportunities, but they're not ready. So that's why they never really um, take full advantage of these opportunities. You get what I'm saying? But when you are somebody that's been waiting and you've been sharpening your blade, not a half fast way, and you've been really waiting for this moment, the right opportunity lands on you. It's. Phew, you know, it's out of right. there. You, it's a home run. You know what I'm saying? So, for me, that's it's what more I look than at. One way. And that's what I look at it. Yeah, there is. You're right. You're both more right. You know, like right. some people been working for it. Some people just stumble into stuff sometimes, and it works because there's everything. There's naturals and everything. Like I said, I was by no means a natural friend of the mic, but I've met people that are full blown naturals. Right. As soon as they got, never did a podcast. Come on, there. They got it, ridiculous personality, and it's just, it's just like, bro, like you should have your own show or a movie. You used to do a movie, which mm-hmm. you should be an actor. You know what I mean? Or whatever, or you just got great conversation, but um, you know, it, it takes time, bro. Like I said, it's 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 like where we come from. We come from a guarded place, so it's like mm, you know what I mean. We watch what we say, you know. We watch what we say in front of, and it, and and then you know that's just society in general. I wish I could go to work and really tell motherfuckers how I feel. Like fuck you, fuck you, <laughs> fuck you. You're cool. You're cool. Fuck all these other motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? But the reality is, it's not. That's not a uh, 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 um conducive. It's not conducive to, to a successful. Uh, work experience because you're gonna fucking get fired or you're gonna piss everybody off and they gonna they ain't gonna be able to wait to throw your ass under the bus which is gonna add stress to your life because now you, you gotta, gotta go to chess. work it has you to be chess, chess. you, has you to know you chess. gotta pick your battles in life and know what the real focus is and and go after what you and we said chess not chest chest Ch- talking about titties and shit but um, <laughs> okay. that's neither here nor there so look glad I'm glad that we got on to that I'm glad that oh, everybody it always does. It, that's because it never left. If that makes sense. I know we're high now, so. But anyways, Knowing By Podcast, episode 38. We're in the building. It's to level up, and we are leveling up. And that doesn't mean that we level up just annually. We level up as needed throughout the process of this, of this podcast. So when you see us and, and you hear us and you hear every episode's getting better and better, then you just know that we're doing our job and we're sharpening our blade and we're ready for that moment. So when the moment lands... We're not going to be like, we don't know what the fuck we're doing or what we're talking about, what's happening, none of that shit. We're just going to hit the ground fucking running like we said. You know what I'm saying? We're Talk about it. Preach. To evolve. That's church right there all day. You know what I'm saying? There's no church in the wild, but there's a little bit over here in the knowing by. Okay, so we're going to get into the here and now. You know how we do it. We, we, we got the little format. We try to give y'all the best possible conversation without going too far down the rabbit hole or too off into tangents to where we don't remember what the fuck we originally was talking about. But, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we're going <laughs> to... Which tends to happen very often. Very, very often. <laughs> That's actually <laughs> a regular occurrence. Exactly. Hitting the, hit, oh, one thing hitting the nail mention, on the head over here. I know you also had to have seen that promoters want to go ahead and start putting rappers up against each other in boxing matches, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot going on. That's kind of cool because it's like, like, like it's like it's like I'm tired of that shit. If y'all really want got an issue, just get in there and fight. Nobody got to get hurt. Y'all could make some money out of it, which you're both gonna get paid. And at the end of the day, uh, win or lose, nobody dies. I mean, you could no one's going to jail, no one dies, and you're getting paid. Ashtray, please. There you go. Let me take this out for you, Ash, all over there. I seen that picture, you know, that picture that says how your vegetables look at you when you go and buy uh, a, new, a cheeseburger and <laughs> stuff in the fridge. And it shows yes. like a zombie from The Walking Dead and he's exactly all bruised and, and, and beat about. up and old and shit, right? Yeah, that crazy guy. Yeah, yeah, no, but look, I seen one the other day, it was the same meme, but it said how your, do- how your doobie in your ashtray looks after it's been rolling around in there all day. <laughs> I'm like, you goddamn right. That's a good one. So look, anyway, knowing by podcast, we're gonna get into it here and now. And the first thing I wanted to talk about is just some, it's just some cool I think to 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 bring out there because this is what uh, people of influence should be using their uh, notoriety for, I guess. Um, Meek Mill, oh, y'all know who that is. Hold up, wait a minute. I'm about to start going crazy right now. Hold on. <laughs> That's how you know Patty High. She let out the. Like nigga, like the TV jumped onto, like like back in the days when the TV the the signal went out, oh my the goodness. snow. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm about to put that sound effect in there. Y'all too. didn't see his face or like the intensity. He didn't, he oh, wanted to go off. He was about to. <laughs> Man, I'm in I'm in full professional podcasting mode. Until the record went off the, off the tracks. 
exactly. <laughs> I'm in full podcasting mode. I, I breathe this shit. That was funny. Yeah. Just remember when the deal flows in and the women start rolling in and out and the drinks start flowing now and the lead starts flying. I'll be there, brother. I'll be there in the middle. He's so bad. I wanted to finish that whole verse. <laughs> Anyways. So, yeah. So, uh, Meek Mill and Michael Rubin, owner of the 76ers, uh, they recently just got help get some bills passed. I'm sure they didn't do it by themselves, but their foundation, I think it's called the Reform Alliance or whatever, something like that. Uh, but yeah, they basically, you know, they, they helped get some laws passed. The governor just signed them to get probation. Um, that, what, I'm, what I'm assuming is just, they just said probation. I didn't read anything in the article about pro, but, you know, get shit changed because, you know, probation's a motherfucker. And, so, and everybody like reform and probation. Like, reform probation to change not it. Not sure about the specifics, but well, some no, sort of change. Well, it just got signed. So I'm sure we could go, you, you could Google it. This is in Richmond, Richmond, Virginia. So um, it's not exactly um, in our state, but at the same time, that's... The start. It's a start, and it's something that needs a to major. get done all over the United States, anyways. You know, there's all overall the whole sentencing laws and everything like that, and 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 the things after that, like the probationary laws and stuff. Those are they're out of pocket. You know what I mean? Yeah, really, no. They're designed to keep people trapped in the system. They're they're yeah. They're designed. It's just it's just high school. You know what I'm saying? It's and all then sabotage. they send you. Then you go to college, which is fucking prison. It is, it's parole. It's you feel what I'm saying? So, no, nah, it is. And so so they just recently helped get that done. They helped get some laws passed. I'm assuming with some. Some um, some sort of uh, you know some local officials over there at in Richmond. So shout out to them. I just wanted to bring that up. You know you know already. Um, it's sad to say everybody here, and probably everybody listen to listening to this shit knows at least one person that has been either incarcerated, is currently or has been on some kind of probation or mm-hmm. parole, and that's a fact. Right. And not only just know them. But knows them like like, that's the, like we're statistic. close. Yeah, you dig what I'm saying? Because yeah. I, I mean, I know a bunch of motherfuckers. I could, you know, what I'm saying I could spin <laughs> it to make it look bad. Yeah. But in reality, well, we have one of the highest. We have the highest, uh, the highest. prison population in the world. Yeah, so per capita, statistically, yeah. that's how it is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and and it's an industrial thing. Like it's been industrialized. Like I think in the '80s right. they said there was only like four or five prisons in the in the in the in, the, in, the, uh, in California mm-hmm. or no not the in the seventies, excuse me, like that. Seventies, eighties, I forgot because it, it, it changed. And all of a sudden there was just an explosion and now there's like twenty something in, in California crazy. by itself. So um you know um I, I've I think I've told y'all the story when I was um oh, um when I was incarcerated uh they had the governor governor was governor Schwarzenegger, you mm-hmm. feel me? So he uh, owned a lot of um, private prisons, privately owned prisons. Mm-hmm. So for the longest, they were shipping inmates out to other states to overflow from California. Literally, that's how much people they're locking up in California. They were sending them to other states because we didn't have room. to have yeah to house them because they had no room here. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't like federal; it was still state. So it was other you know it's other facilities, privately owned prisons, right? Um, so he had a lot of investment in that. Once his uh, term was up and we had the new governor, what was his name before this one? Brown or... Oh, I believe so. Yeah. Yes. Was it what, Gray Davis? No, no, no. It was, that was before him. It was... Oh, I'm talking about Gray after Davis. after uh, Governor Schwarzenegger was Jim Brown, I think. I believe so. Right? I think so. Jim Brown, the old man. The old ass man, bro. Yeah, I think it was Jim Brown. Don't quote me on that. Like I said, we don't fact check. Mm-hmm. You could Google it though. But um, <laughs> anyway, Jerry so... Brown. Hmm? Jerry Brown. Jerry Brown, there we there go. go. It's Jim Brown, Jerry Brown, Jim Brown. Uh, Brown ain't that though. Jim Brown was the running back, I believe. Brown. Yeah. Back in the sixties. Yeah. So look, I mean, they, I mean, they in the same age range, dude. It's hella old. You feel me? So, anyway, so Governor Jerry Brown or whatever. And um, Jerry, nah, I don't know, Jerry Jones, Jim Brown, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so, so basically, as soon the day that he took, he took, he resumed responsibilities as the mayor of California, he put a halt. To all interstate, um, interstate uh, transportation and housing of California inmates. Well, it just so happened your boy was sitting in Susanville, and I was waiting to get transferred out of state. Uh-huh. And I was sad. But I was like, man, fuck. I'm like, I ain't going. Nobody gonna visit me all the way the fuck out here in Oklahoma or some right. crazy shit. I'm like, this fucking sucks. And I still had like two years left. So. I actually got lucky because on the New Year's, the, the New Year, the I guess the New Year, that's when the New Year changes and that's when the governor's official New Year starts or whatever. Yeah, that's when the law goes into effect. Yeah, um, he came in, he signed a thing, boom, that's it. And I literally, they, they froze all, this, all, the, all the buses right. and I winded up getting a transfer in California because of that. Wow. So, so you know, 
just to give you guys a magnitude of how that shit affects people, it's like, you know, the over incarceration and, and just overall the amount of probation and the easiest and the in the easy way that you can violate mm -hmm. keeps these prisons full. And at one point, like I said, we were out of state a lot. And I'm sure there's still out of state housing. I'm pretty sure because they haven't let that many people out. But even now they're talking about letting a lot of nonviolent people out and a lot of motherfuckers is like, yo, it's the governor, blame it on him. I like, but you gotta do something. You took them all off the streets. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody was a severe criminal. Right. You know what I mean? Um, some some people were, were, were on that shit, but other people were really just sometimes drug addicts, sometimes mm -hmm. mental health issues. You know, right. you don't know what the fuck. They weren't even trying to understand what it was. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. so they were just like, fucking lock it up. Let's make some money. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, that's what it is. So shout out to them. I, I brought that in there because I kind of felt like that was cool. We need more of that all around. You know what I'm saying? And uh, y'all talking about... So, also, we got Cap Alert. Just so you guys know, I think this dude... I th Cap Alert is when we think that a story is suspicious. That's what we're going to say. So, this just sounds kind of... <laughs> so, like, uh, Massachusetts man claimed that he uh, he's a lobster diver or a lobster fisherman, whatever the fuck they call. I guess he claims that uh, he was swallowed whole by a whale. He was, he was swallowed whole by a whale. I hope he wasn't talking about getting drunk at the bar and fucking leaving, oh with, the, leaving with the bar fly. Oh, and, first thought you know was what I'm saying? Like so it's the yeah. real life Moby Dick. Like, what's going on right he now? He literally like, said he what? got. He literally said the wall, the, the, the fucking well. Even that was allegorical. Me. Like that shit. That shit sounded <laughs> fake to me. Like it sounded fake to me when I first heard it. And um, you know, he. I was like, come on now, bro. You're not Pinocchio. You're not fucking. This ain't <laughs> Geppetto. <laughs> yeah, this ain't the. This ain't the Bible. It ain't Jonah. Like you know what I mean? Come on now. I don't know about all that because to me, like, and, and it's not just because I'm. I, I you am don't skeptical. know what if it's the modern Jonah. But look, look, I'm skeptical of everything, but at the <laughs> same trying. time, exactly. But at the same time, I look at it like this: like, you know, them them big whales that he's talking about. Them motherfuckers don't eat big fish. They don't eat big things right. like that. So they eat like they skim the water for plankton and eat small ass like sardine fish shit. Like mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Cruel, shit, smaller right. than that, right? You know, we all know that. We all seen fucking, what's National it called? Geographic. Yeah, it's in National Geographic and what was the other fucking Bill Nye, the science guy? I don't know. But um, <laughs> we all seen that shit before, right? And so we kind of already, so when he said that the fucking whale swallowed him, it's like, I don't believe that shit. I would believe it more that the whale slapped you with his tail so and just knocked your ass off like 100 feet or some stupid place. shit. I don't know. He, well, he went, to the do he went to the doctors and, you know, that was his claim. And now the doctors, some doctors are kind of refuting his whole thing. That's why I said it's cat because so, some doctors are refuting his claim saying that he would have more But why did it damage. get any attention in the first place if the doctors right there were like, Yo, nah, no, no, no. I don't think it was real. them. I think it was just him saying it at first and then probably got checked. But I don't know. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's the clout <laughs> era. So I don't know what the fuck. True. Like, exactly what happened. True. Bar, right? And he started out, he was, I was hitting hillbilly hand fishing, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, one thing led to another. You know, next week at the park. Bada bing, hey, bada boom. Who told you about my baby mama? Let me finish this shot first. Yeah. Let me tell you a thing or two. Somebody in the background says, Who told you about my baby mama? And she's a whale. <laughs> she's a whale of a tail. Anyways, so yeah, I think that's Cap Alert. We got doctors saying it is. I'm just like, come on, bro, stop playing. You know what I mean? If you fucking blew yourself up, hand billy, what's it, hillbilly hand fishing you know or what you said? Come on now, just see, just say Why that. Why did he go to the doctor in the first place? Because he said he was injured. See, that's the thing. Like, people make up lies. This is the reason why I was like, it's like he was probably did some embarrassing ass shit. You know how when you fucking hurt yourself in the most embarrassing fashion and you really don't want to tell nobody exactly why? Is he a professional? No, well, he's a lobster diver, so he was in the water for a reason. That's what I'm saying. You never know. He went in there, he probably did some dumb ass shit hurt himself to where he did have to go to the doctor and when the doctor asked him what happened he was like i was out on the water and, and like how did he escape the whale i'm so confused because it, it's fucking lies patty i think we established that it's lies like i said so there's after this point we really don't have to try to understand why because that motherfucker got a bug. i don't understand why i got some attention in the first place like everybody's like lies are just gonna be news now what are you saying He's professional, maybe we're trying to click that workman's comp. That's what I'm saying. Like, like yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, I'm like, man, and you can't prove that. How do you prove that? Go exactly. to the emergency room and tell them you got That's how I'll be like, I'll be like, I'd like to tell you guys that I'd like you to prove to me that I wasn't swallowed by a whale. Who the fuck here is the whale expert? And then it just, and then it got exactly. like news attention and media attention. And then he was just like, I'm in too oh, deep shit. now. Now oh, I have shit. to commit. Oh, like, exactly. Now I have to commit. That's why I said it's cap. That's why I said it's cap. He's in way too deep. 
Because think about it. Okay, and we're not saying it's not real, but if it is real, that would be like a miracle. Oh say say not. Goodness. Imagine that. Oh, what happened to you, bro? I got, literally got swallowed by a whale and he spit me out because <laughs> I tasted like shit. And, and and I survived. I swam back home. Oh I don't know. That, it just sounds too far-fetched to me. And now they're saying that that shit might be capped. So I'm going to go with... I don't always listen to the doctors, but sometimes the doctors hit it right on the head. So we're just going to keep it moving <laughs> like that. Okay. We're going to go ahead and take a short break. And we will be back. Snow Invite Podcast. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know. Bang, we back. Snow Invite Podcast came back from our much-needed break. Because just like everything else... You didn't else, say bang, bang. I, you know what? I, you gotta keep it guessing, Patty. They can't. They can't know all your moves. You know what I'm saying? Bang, when bang. they expect a bang bang, that's when I give them just a bang. You feel me? Like, <laughs> Sometimes it'll just be a little pew pew. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nah 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 nah. We always bang 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 bang. Sometimes pew, we bang pew. more. Sometimes we bang less. But we're always banging. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> anyway, so we're back. And uh, I guess you know. I mean, I don't know if you guys want to. I got a couple more. Maybe I'll just do the DJ Khaled one because I kind of felt bad for him and shit. Oh my goodness! But uh, you know, over the weekend, over the weekend, you know, they had the YouTube versus okay. TikTok. I think he'll be okay. I mean, I don't feel that bad for him. Come on now, like you know, it's different. My level of feeling bad to somebody else is probably just thinking he's an asshole or something. Like, <laughs> like he's a, I told you, I felt bad, but yeah, you were being a fucking asshole, really. So, you know what I mean? but uh, yeah, he had performed at the TikToker versus YouTube boxing match. I don't, I forgot the names of the fucking dudes because I don't care. Um, but you know, cause it's just out of my league. It's not like it's out of my lane. I'm not gonna say I don't care, but I don't care. But um, he performed on there, and hey, yo, I swear, like, it was like if you're, it, it looked like when you're trying to perform on, like, when I, I don't know about y'all, but um, I've done like live streams and shit, mm-hmm. and we've had to like be juiced up and, and perform on a live stream. But right. there ain't nobody in there. Right. So you that's, have to hype yourself up and... That's how it looked like in there, bro. He went in there and he was trying to do all I do is win and his song. and all, He must have got bread because, you know, Khaled ain't moving for just nothing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So he, he he established already in what he does. So I'm sure they paid him a pretty penny for it. But nobody in the crowd, it was like dead. Like maybe you heard a couple people singing along that knew the song. But everybody else, it was just... just it, it was bad. It, it was like he was performing for a live stream, not an actual live audience. You know what I'm saying? Like... So, you know, I I chalk it up to just not knowing. Okay. Not so it's kn- Austin McBroom and Bryce Hall. Mm. That's what it was. And two, obviously, two influential uh, social media stars, I guess you could say, because that's yeah. where they're laying, right? Like, mm-hmm. that we're, you know. YouTube no versus TikTok fight. Results. Exactly, Austin exactly. McBroom no, it actually looked kind of, yeah, yeah. It, it looked, I ain't gonna lie, I looked at the fight, though, and it looked like it was a good fight. Like, they were really squabbing, because at the end, when dude knocked dude out, he knocked him out, out. You feel me? Like, okay. So it was it was pretty cool. Yeah. I didn't get, to, I didn't really watch it. Be, and to be honest with you, I ain't gonna lie, it's probably poor marketing. And I didn't hear a lot about it. And they had a bet a million dollars if one of them got and knocked out. And he lost, out. and he lost, yeah. yeah. He lost a million. Hopefully he pays that shit. You know what I'm saying? Oh, he got another ass whooping coming to him soon, I'm sure. <laughs> we coming for that million some 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 way, shape, or form. So, uh, yeah, you know, I feel bad for Khaled. You know what I'm saying? It, it's just one of those things where you got to know your demographic. You got to know your the people you're catering to. Like, the YouTubers and TikTokers, let's face it, that's a relatively young, young crowd. You know, I'm I saying like... the entertainment industry, too, I think that they acknowledge that everything's not always going to be cracking. Like... Not every show is a home run, like, and that's just kind of. Oh yeah, for sure. But just for like perspective, for me at least, I think that's just what it is because it showed like while he was performing, they were showing cutaways of the crowd, and like a lot of them were little ass kids looking like, who the fuck is this dude? (laughs) Is that the fat dude from Snapchat? Like, I think they know who DJ Khaled is. No, no. Khaled. See, this is the thing that I noticed also, and maybe it's just because now we're in the age of information where we could just see everybody's progress. Things get worn out really fast. And it's shit that used to last longer and be generational, like Snoop Dogg is super generational. Right. But even then now, if you go to like the kids between like six and 15, most of them probably don't know who the fuck that is. Mm -hmm. And that's real, real talk. And you, you don't think it is until you conversate with them and you see mm-hmm. them and they don't. They really don't. They showed a picture of Snoop Dogg to a little boy. There's an actual video. And Snoop Dogg was doing this dance from his uh, his Snoop Dogg video. I forgot right. what song it is. Um, you know, the um, I Drop It Like It's Hot. And he's doing this wow. video. And the little kid's like, oh, look, he's doing the Fortnite dance. Mm. You dig what I'm saying? So yeah. that's how you know <laughs> everything has... It, it used to not be like so generational no more. Now it's like you know it has its cutoff age. You know what I'm saying? Like even for the younger kids, that's not what they checking for. You got every just, generation though. 
Yeah, but it's a little but different things now. Because things disposable are more disposable now. now. That's what that's I'm saying. So you're running true. through shit a lot faster than you would. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not saying the Snoop Dogg would never get played like, out. But as far as the rec- rec- recognizing, the rec- uh, whatever you call it. Recognition. The recognition of him, you know what I'm saying? At least, you know, that has should have a little bit longer span. And it's not oh, nothing okay. It's not nothing towards anybody or any artist, especially not Kelly. Like I said, he good. I'm sure he dry, dried his tears with $100 bills so and shit. So what do you think like, about the Coil Array? A performance because I know you must have seen the the video about that as well where they said that she bombed or whatever because well was she really said thing. what did she say it was the reason she had a reason for it she said they bombed because I think they were playing they were, they, 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 she said something about I'm not and don't quote me on this but I, I from what I got from it said the DJ was playing all her hits already mm-hmm. so when it was time for her to perform she performed some old other ass songs that nobody really knew and people were like oh. why are you not performing your fucking hits that you, but they I had already been slapping them like. See, I kind of heard that. the. It was kind of like how you were saying with the DJ Khaled situation, where it was kind of like it wasn't that demographic. They were like older people. It could be that too. Yeah, uh, that's what I heard. But I don't know. I don't really dig too much into it. But I was just like, but that kind of comes with the entertainment industry. Like if you, they nah, don't know yeah. who you I mean, are. It, like for example, BTS. You but know like who I'm BTS saying is? though, this is the difference though. People know who the fuck Khaled is. They come is. out here and they try to put on a show. They're gonna have the teeny boppers, of course. But like in general, they're gonna be like, who the fuck are these guys? Like, bro, they're one of the biggest groups in the world oh, right yeah. now like it's just your flavor so, it's just your age and your if flavor you go out and all. perform in front of those type of people who are like who the fuck are you like you said and that's like, all i was saying because when but, it comes to cali that's all i was saying it's like he sh- he should have known his demographic because <laughs> he, he probably so would think he should have not taken that job at all hell no nah, take that get that money it. hell no nah. but then so like, i tell nobody to not get their money i'm just like, saying <laughs> i'm still trying to figure out what verse did he spit you know because i can't think of a single one i mean did he perform everyone else's verse Nah, he did his song "All I Do Is Win" with T Pain. That that's an but outdated really, song, though. Because yeah. if he would have did like a, a recent Justin Bieber song, he's just did with them. Maybe yeah. they would have known. I think like, that. I think, but see, that's the thing. I think he specifically picked that for because it's before fight. It was like that. It's a hype song. He's like, "What's my hype like, song?" He's not gonna go right before the fucking main event and go with a Justin Bieber song. That shit just ain't gonna pop. Like you know, but what you like you said, know your demographic. So what? Do you- Still, it's fight night. But see, the thing is, also most of those kids don't know that. Like they they don't know the traditional fight night hype. Like walking out to hype songs, the fighters and you shit like that. that? that yeah, you so you it probably would have hit. It, but if it was know? a Fortnite song, like that's what, that's what I'm saying. But see, the thing is, it's a, it is an old song. But I know why he tried to do it because. It was a hype song. It's a, it's a song you're gonna jump out and, and hopefully get people jumping and yeah, win. That's that's what that's what the whole theme of the night is. Somebody gotta win. Somebody gotta True. lose. You feel what I'm saying? It's yeah. like a stadium football type song. Saying. You dig what I'm saying? I, but but to me, like in my opinion, and that's just my opinion alone. Uh, I just feel like he just didn't know the crowd because like I said, they showed they showed pictures of the crowd and it was like all ages friendly. It wasn't your typical fight night. I had cat, dads with their kids next to them and the little kids are on their shoulders it's looking at like, like what the fuck? Thing at that as because well, it's like... YouTube versus TikTok. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like if he would have did all I do is win at the Mayweather Logan Paul, that shit would have probably went crazy. So again, what should he have done? Took the money and kept doing it anyway. Keep it Go moving. The <laughs> That's what you do. Go, go get your money. Like, I'm not telling him not get his money. I just thought I just you know I brought it up because it's like you know it looked kind of crazy, and and and, and, the, and the reality is it's like at the end of the day he's so gonna be fine. So maybe not all money is good money because it has you nah, out here that. looking crazy. <laughs> no, but you know what though, for him he's already established. Maybe that might have hurt like an up and coming artist. But him, first of all, you know he's there. He got paid. And he got paid well. You feel me? He's not just doing that for anybody. And then second... He's diversified. Yeah, he's got so much other shit going on that it doesn't matter. He still got him viral in a form. Maybe it's not for the best form, mm-hmm. but he's not going home and stressing off that shit. He got... He just dropped the yeah, album. Yeah, like, I didn't see. I was like, that kind of makes sense because... Yeah, Khaled's no, but commercial, I just like, brought it up because that shit looked wild as like, fuck. And like, and for everybody out there that don't know, it's like there's a lot to it that, like you said, that <laughs> happens. It ain't always just... You go out there and everybody feels you. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's not always a home run. Like yeah, every single a lot. Show of, a lot is a of these comics run. too. They go and they don't show you their tough crowds. Yeah. Only some of them do if they're really like and out there exposed. The, that's but, the actual entertainment industry. Mm-hmm. Just like <laughs> same things with like these festivals. Like people go to these festivals and they're there for all these different types of artists. And sometimes when the artist goes on and they don't know who they are, like it's not as popping. And you're just like, oh shit! Like this, pe- the act before me was popping, but they knew who they were. Like, so that's just how it is sometimes. Like, that's how it goes. 
That's how it goes. That's how it goes. Okay, well, shit, that's what it is. Shout out to Cal, man. I know you got the bag for that shit, so it ain't, a, you know what I mean? It, 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 ain't a, it ain't a bad thing we're talking about. It's actually a good thing. You know, free publicity. You dig what I'm saying? So was the Were the parents, like, going, like, rocking, though? Because they nah. knew the song, like... Nah, I didn't see that. I didn't see that, neither. I don't think too much... I think the parents were just like, I can't wild out. I got my little kids right here. Like, they... I don't want... They are like, this is supposed to end at 9 o'clock. We're going to yeah. traffic. Exactly. They had it there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we're going we're, we're, we're going to Legoland tomorrow. With like khaki shorts. Little, little kids. Dad, I hate you, Dad. <laughs> I, I hate you because you didn't get better seats. And their New Balance shoes. <laughs> exactly. No, uh, he got he got the sandals with Tucks the white socks. The, the strap sandals, though. You feel me? <laughs> With the with the with the with the cargo Straight khaki dad shorts, dad mode. Yeah, it, yeah, dad mode. You feel me? But nah, you're in super dad mode when you got the white socks with this <laughs> with the two strap sandals. You know what I'm yeah, talking I know about? Exactly you know exactly. What you're Everybody about. knows what the fuck I'm talking about. I want some yeah. borachas though, honestly. That's that's that warfare fit. You know? Exactly. That's that. I got asked the other day. Suburban warfare. They're like, do you know what a <laughs> meme is? I'm like, you little fool. I'm like, don't you know I was making memes before you were born? <laughs> They look at you like you some ancient relic and shit. Like, I know. like, like you, like you got. They look at you like that meme that I was saying about the Walking Dead and had the zombie tone. <laughs> by how your kids that, look at you when you're just breathing that here, was standing the look here. I shot at her like just like, oh, how dare you? Do you know what level of nerd I am? I love that about kids. No matter how cool somebody thinks they are, no matter how like big somebody straight. gets, your kids will definitely humble you they and be like, humble who? the shit out of you. What? Make, make <laughs> you feel this big. I don't care. <laughs> That's wild. Okay, so look, we will keep it moving. That's what we do. You know, we're always in motion. You know what I mean? Knowing by podcast, and we are gonna jump into the next segment. Uh, uh it is called uh, put you up on game. Basically, this is the time when we take make any announcements, anything going on. Uh, to talk about anything, any advertisements, or maybe uh, just things that we got going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and. Uh, oh my excuse, gosh, you're so excuse disgusting. Me. Yes, yes. But um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, make my announcements, you know what I'm saying, for the week. Uh, next weekend, June 19th, we are doing the Stick Gang Cypher, two cities, one night, two ciphers. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I am um, a part of it. It's being put together by Stick Gang TV. Uh, shout out to Stick Gang Kush. Shout out to Stick Gang Legs. Everybody out there in LA doing their thing, bro. Appreciate y'all. They're coming out to the Bay and I'm hosting it with them. You know what I mean? Making sure that we got them locations tight and we and we just coordinating and, and show hospitality. They showed us a lot of hospitality. We was out there. So, you know, we always got to extend that, you know, in return. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to do the cypher. The female cypher takes place in Oakland. Male ciphers in San Francisco. We're going to give them that real Bay Area look, that Bay Area flavor, because that's what they want. You know what I mean? They're in, they in our city, so they wanted to get that vibe. And, um, yeah, it... It's what's it called? It is what it is. Y'all want to know where to find it? Y'all can go to Stick Gang, Stick underscore Gang TV one or oh, oh, 01, excuse me, on Instagram. Just just type in Stick Gang, you'll find it. It'll be like the first thing that pops up. Type that in there, you get all the details. But it's at private locations, which means that we are not telling you. Ha, <laughs> you can't go because uh, it's not for you. But just son, it's just like making those announcements because the people that need to know know. <laughs> we just want to let you know that you can't go. <laughs> <laughs> I did. The No Invite Podcast. That's what I'm saying. Where you're really gonna be going to? I don't. I don't know why you guys are making a big deal. Like, if you're listening to this, you should already know how I fucking get down. Like, y'all know what time it is. Like, and, and, and not even then. If you know me, if you I'm really know me, I'm just telling you that I can't tell you. <laughs> I'm just letting you know that you can't go. And that that's, you can't. I'm having a party. You're not invited. Yeah, that's. I was just thinking that. That's from fucking what's it called? Um, super bad, right? Oh my goodness. Yeah, he goes, hey, did you hear about my party? He's all, yeah. He's all, oh, do you remember? And he spit on because you're not invited. Oh, yeah. I was like, we ain't gonna gloss past that, right? Like, we <laughs> nah, we had to address that. We had. To, it's like a speed bump. You feel me? You feel it. You accept it, and you move on. <laughs> no, I'm saying something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But anyway, so yeah, you know, and y'all know what I mean. And if you know me and you do this music shit or you want to get down, tap in with me directly, you could be there. You know, all the behind the scenes shit. I'm not going to invite the world to go be there because that's not, it's not conducive to being a productive environment. I'm just letting y'all know because, because it's, it's we out here, baby. And if you ain't out there, then you ain't anywhere. You feel me? <laughs> do something with your life. Make something of yourself. You feel me? Be somebody, baby. Be somebody, baby. <laughs> now clean yourself up. And cover yourself. No, wipe yourself. 
<laughs> yeah, no my podcast. The fuck we talking about? So in case y'all don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. This is how we get down. So it's, it's I mean really. But anyway, so yeah, um, that's going on next weekend. Then we also got uh, 182A OBB Halfers official album dropping soon. I'm going to keep saying this shit every fucking podcast until <laughs> until you have no choice but to fucking Ooh. hear me out. We're going to bang that shit. Coming out soon, dropping soon on Rebirth Entertainment. We also got Chico Spitz Circulate album dropping real fucking soon. We're going to drop some more. Don't trust me. We're going to drop the whole applause for everybody on this. You know what I'm saying? We're going to hook them up. But drop them real fucking soon. So uh, make sure that you guys are on the lookout for that. Also on Rebirth Entertainment. Me, I ain't, I ain't got nothing. I'm in the background. I'm the Phantom of the Opera. You know what I'm saying? I'm the hand of Mona Lisa's skirt. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm in the background pulling strings. You know what I'm saying? So when you, when, 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 when you see me, you don't because you just think you did. But, you know, I, I'm just neither here nor there. I'm but, uh, just telling you that I, just, I can't tell I just, you. <laughs> I'm just letting you know that you're not supposed to know. And I can't tell you if that makes sense. But anyway, so it yeah. It don't. It don't, but it, it don't. don't. It don't matter. This this no invite. Do we ever fucking make sense? We just try to we try to make we sense don't. of the sense that we're not making. We don't. <laughs> In this world, there's some options. And you know, it's one of those things you take in moderation. Exactly. Yeah. Sense all exactly. Everything in moderation. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Let me spark this joint up before we hop off into the next leg. Who got the lighter? Throw it. So, okay, so check it out. We got that out the way. We got those announcements. I know I had that. What else did I have? I had something else I wanted to make an announcement. Shout out to Saints Kicks. Y'all already know, man. Go to um, go to YouTube. I mean, go to Instagram, Saints underscore Kicks. You could go on there. That's my partner. That's my folks. I'm always going to shout them out. I'm always going to plug them. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. But I always do because I never don't. So, once again, if that don't make no sense, then it's probably because I'm smoking. But um, shout out to Saints Kicks. Make sure y'all follow them. You know, it's where I get all my shoes. If I need any kind of Jordans, any kind of new new uh, streetwear or anything like that, he got not only local and, and, and boutique, he also got vintage streetwear. And he got all sorts of, you know, kicks, Jordans, Yeezys, Dunks, whatever you're into. I go over there and shop with him, man. He's good people. Um, you know what I mean? Make sure that you guys tap with him. Saints underscore kicks. Y'all could find him on Instagram. He has it all. Um, with that being said, I think we're done with the announcements. We're going to go ahead and get off into the next part of the motherfucking uh, podcast, which is called What's On Your Playlist. So, Patty, what's on your playlist? Man? What you been listening to lately? What's the vibe been on? Because we're going to make announcements about new music, but what's your vibe been on? What's, what you been really vibing to the past couple days? Um, at heart, uh, you know, I really love... Oh, my goodness. Excuse oh, me. That was my music. Who are you to tell me that it's not? Before I had to get ahead of that before she said something. Go ahead. Hold on. I need a moment. To just ingest. Your she's tired. She's basically that's a nice way of her saying she's tired of my shit. By the way, um, you know my heart is really goes to R and B, so that's what I've been listening to a lot lately. How do you R and B? Some Zena, some her, but um, I that's also right. love my hip hop and my rap. You know, so like, you know who I really like? I like Saya. Mm. Saya is one of like my favorite. One of my favorite. Joe rappers. Saya, man, for yeah. real. Shout out to Saya. You got that new um, Mr. One Eighty Seven uh, Seeing Green freestyle out. That's dope. Yeah. So just go ahead so and it's still in the rotation right there? Yeah, that's oh, nice yeah. right now. Um, I want to listen to the whole new Mozzie and YG project. You know, I want to give that a fair shot. listen to, yeah. Have you listened to it? I haven't actually. I want to uh, listen to that. A lot of people, I mean, you know, for whatever reasons, people were, were killing it. They weren't saying too many nice things about it, but I like to really? make up my own mind, yeah. So that might be something to, that I look into. You know what I mean? What else you got? Um, also, The Girl in Red. That's a good group. They uh, what, what kind of music is that? R&B? Uh, it's more like chill music. Pop. It's um, I guess what you could kind of. What like, do they call that other shit? It's called lo-fi. Is it lo-fi music? It could be. It could kind of be. It's kind of like. I like that shit. It's like hippie you. sabotage and shit like that. It's like, like that it's chill just, vibe. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah. It's not necessarily. There's no lyrics necessarily. Sometimes it's just like beats. You feel me? And it's like you know how house music is sometimes just beats. And shit like that. But yeah, it's yeah. Not, Instrumentals. It's not, it doesn't have that energy, that, that hyper energy about it's it. It's more like it's, it's more like it's the like quiet sabotage. storm. Fucking, you ain't, you ain't you ain't heard nothing until you heard fucking. It's a hard knock life played by Kenny G in, in the band. You feel me? <laughs> I, I like I said, I told you before when we were in juvenile uh, hall, they used to like try to keep us hella sedated by uh, feeding us a lot of carbs. And then when we went in our room, they didn't like to play us KML and shit, right? Like the low, the hip hop station. So oh, they play yeah, us yeah, like. Yeah. 
102.9, The Quiet Storm. And it'd be a lot of Kenny right. G. Kenny G does fucking jazz. notorious B.I.G.'s yeah. Big Papa, you know what I'm saying? Instru- jazz instrumental, like shit like that. The you know what I'm saying? Versions yeah, and like it's hella, sh- no, it's hella chill. Mean. Like they'll take them. They're, they're instrumental, but they're like redone. Yeah, I know exactly. But what all played mean. with fucking, he's doing the main vocals with the yeah, flute or the with fucking. With the saxophone. The yeah, sax I think that should be dope sometimes. Flute. I'd be digging that sometimes. Like, I that's, like that. But that's what, that's what it comes to mind when you told me that. I'd be like that quiet storm. Yeah. Chill shit, like. Um, and then what else? Uh, Give on, cause again that's R and B. Roddy Rich got that new ride right out. That's cool. I'm it's an album or is it a song? For Give on? No, no, Roddy Rich. Uh, this, it's a new song that I know. It's called Ride Right. And, and 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 Give on is what an album? Um, he's the artist. He's the artist, so yeah. it's just a single too. He has a few. No, I think he has a whole project out right now. Honestly. You gotta send me some links. Yeah. Cause so, I ain't got much. All I know. Oh, is, and Lord came out with some new shit. You know, Royals. You know that that thing that I used to do Royals and shit. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah. I did Royals. Yeah, she got something new house. I want to hear that. Like, what I, I like mean? to listen to all what different I types. Mean? You know me, like my hand. And yeah, everything. and everybody, like everybody that listens to the podcast, you can find us on Instagram at no underscore invite underscore podcast. And make sure that you guys uh, spam. You know what we got to do? I got to make a clip of this segment so I could ask our, our, our Instagram following to like not only listen to, because this would be a way for them to get a bar of our, um, of our picks, mm-hmm. but also for them to drop in the comments like what, like, what what are you listening to right like now? What's that. your what's your what's I always is there an artist music. we need to know about? Yeah, right. is there an artist is there an artist someone you know that? Oh, result? also, um, it's Lil Mac, right? That's yeah, how we say his name, Lil Mac. You know, uh, two two three nights. That's what it's called. Uh, yeah, featuring Shout Brody out to Lil Mac, Mac man. and Case Cash, I believe it is. He's dope. Uh, yeah. And that's nice. He's, he's pretty nice. dope. He's, he's, like, oh he's nice, with it, really. So that's dope. Yeah, and 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 shout out to uh, like I said, look, I have a bad, terrible, terrible short term memory. So all my artists, all the people I know with, if you listen to the podcast and you down with me and you want, and you got some stuff that you want to like, you know, just tell me, like, I'll put it out here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? For the people. Cause really this is just a a segment for me to share. I'm not vouching for music or not unvouching for music in a sense. Like if I like it and I heard it already, then I Mm -hmm. could vouch for it. But if I ain't heard it, I I, I approach it with an open mind, not, um, yeah, not I'm like, very music centric. Yeah. 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 So, so just know that we approach it when we make these references you could tell if we know them, and if we know them, we'll pretty much vouch for them. If we don't know them, it, do, it doesn't mean that we're not vouching for them. It's, it's going to give it a listen. Give it an honest right. listen. You know what I'm saying? Go search it out for yourself and see if you like that shit. Because it might do... It, what, what, what's good for you, I may not like it, but that don't make it it's not fire. You and feel vice me? versa. And vice versa. Like, you might not like the shit, I, the shit that I do, but you'd like the artist. I, I recommend it maybe a song that you're like, ah, whatever, but the, you, you let's check out the artist and you really like that shit. Right. You like other shit that they got, so... We want everybody to be themselves. No, I don't. Oh my goodness. You could be anything you want to be as long as you're six feet away from me at all times. Cause, you know what I'm saying. Uh, some of y'all like could overdoing. Be themselves yeah, that's that's away. what I said. You could be anybody or anything <laughs> you want to be as long as you're six feet away from me. So, let them be there. Yeah, but if you don't like it, that's cool. Let them yeah, be their that's best. cool too. You know, sometimes the best may not be themselves. Whatever your best is, I want you to be that and more. I want you to do better than your best. If that makes sense. All right. So look, that's all. That's, that's pretty much it. I don't got much. What are you I got, listening to? I, I, right now, I, to be honest with you, I've really been on. I've been on my fucking because I'd be like on my. I'd be on my like. I don't know. I don't even know what to quite categorize it because it's a. To me, it's just my little fuck my stoner music is what I call it because <laughs> I don't know what to categorize it because rock has so many genres and subgenres. Like if I say this is metal or I say this is that, they're gonna feel like yo the disrespected. And and I, I kind of like if I listen to it, I kind of want to know at least you know where it lies at. But since I don't, I'm just gonna say it's my stoner music. Yeah. But I be listening to like you know like. Like Green uh, Day, right, Green Day, time, Three Doors right Down, yeah. fucking Nirvana. White Stripes, do you like uh, White Stripes? White Stripes are cool. I like White yeah. Stripes. Uh, but I, but so I really like go. Flatbush Zombies, Flatbush Zombies. No, I, I heard I heard about <laughs> them, but I never really heard about them. And the and the thing that I go for, I go for like the more like, like Offspring. Uh, uh, Huba Stank type shit. You oh, feel what I'm saying? Like, I didn't know like Huba that. Stank. I knew like the yeah, other Yeah, like ones, Offspring. But... Uh, what else? Uh, uh, Three Doors Down. Do you like Hootie and the Blowfish? Nah, I don't do that. <laughs> Got me fucked up. Who else? Um, Cause Huba Stank is kind of right there next Puddle to that. Puddle of to Mud. Me. Uh, Jimmy Eats World. Shit like that, or some shit like that. I forgot what it was. Nice. Different. There's different bands that I like. This shit. 
that are cool. That's what you've been listening to. That's what I've been listening that's to you. lately. That's kind of like you feeling like the music you be listening to at certain seasons in your life is kind of like the soundtrack to your life at that moment. It's like, just a, it's a vibe. <laughs> it's just a, when they say survive it without it being corny, it's the truest sense. It's a vibe. You can, just like like Tupac, one of my all time favorite rappers, but I don't listen to him every day. Right. I used to when I was younger and shit. Right. Now it's just a vibe. Whenever I'm feeling, cause I ain't gonna lie. And, and now that I said that, yeah, like the other week, I just felt like that vibe. You know what right. I'm saying? I, and I and I went and I ran through a couple of his albums, just the best right. songs I like, just listening to him. But I don't listen to it every day. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just you know, music's a vibe. So one day you're in the mood for this, and the next day you might be in the mood for that. That's why I always like collecting new music from shit from from different people and, and listening to it, and just you know, it's like exploring. it's like exploring. But not only that, if I really like it, it'll be it'll it'll be like I'm like my own radio station. It'll be in rotation somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you dig what I I'm feel saying? The same way. It's like being at Costco. Because I've heard plenty... Yeah, yeah. You know, you don't, you want to get a sample of something. You don't want just a sample of the Hot Pockets, man. You want to try what they got over there. What's that? Yeah. I, always, that I tell people food? that all the time. I'd be like, my music's like my food. Like, yeah. sometimes I have a craving for, like, Mexican food. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I have a craving for, like, Chinese food. Real so talk. I so it's like, sometimes I want to hear rock. Sometimes I want to hear rap. Maybe I want a little Fuck bit of yeah. everything. Sometimes a little goulash, you know? A little... Uh, sometimes with Jimi Hendrix and not off type like shit. You know what I mean? You're right, and then it suffices my appetite. Like then I'm satisfied. Yeah, it's like. definitely it's definitely a vibe. I, I love it. You know what I mean? Uh, it, it and all shit. Like I go now as you get as I, I'm getting older. You know, you 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 run through that. Though, like you said, those phases. Sometimes it's mixed of a bunch of different shit. But sometimes I like like whenever I do listen to shit from back in the day. I'll get on a whole kick from it and I'll be listening to it for like three days and I'll just be worm, Sometimes, down right? a wormhole. I'll be like, oh, I remember this song. Yeah. Or I heard. It, oh, I remember this, and I'll be searching it, searching it. And, and I'll just get on that. Sh- you know what's been yeah. happening with me? Like songs that you know bring a lot of nostalgia. They're actually now taking on a new form, to where like now, because again, like when you listen to that song, sometimes it just brings you back to like that one place. But now that I'm listening, and it's happening a lot with like old things that I'm being exposed to, like all over again, mm-hmm. kind of like your childhood reoccurring in a sense. Yeah, yeah, if that it makes is. sense. And that's exactly and what it is. They're taking, but the these same concepts and ideas that represented one thing are now taking on a totally different identity. Yeah, sense. yeah. Does that make sense? It, like, I, I think I think we know what you're saying. The songs yes. that I used to listen to when I was a little kid, like oh, it brought me back there. Now I'm listening to it now, and it still brings me back. But now it's a diff- there's a different meaning because I'm going through the different things in my life. Well, you're seeing it from a different perspective that's now. T- like yeah. I think you're appreciating it in a different, different way. Different way, exactly. Because you're getting older, and it's I like, like that. wine. You know, real good music like ages that. good in different ways. Yeah. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I like that. And real I'm good very music. intimate with my music, so like Yeah, so and all and, and I don't give a fuck how old you are, like. generation, young or old, all generations growing up, whatever kind of music you listen to, that's one thing we could say that you as you get older, there's certain music that reminds you of certain points in your life that if you listen to them, you could kinda almost get that feeling and it's it's more like you're closer to it and it's just like you could feel it like reliving it, right? You could feel that vibe. And then uh, as you get older and you start seeing it again, it's like you not only do you do it and you can relive that moment, but you also kind of see the value in it now of actually being able to do that when you want to. Maybe, yeah. Not all the time, but every now and then. Like That's why I save the Pac songs and all the barrier classics and all mm-hmm. the shit like that. I only, I only listen to them when it's a vibe. And, and when I feel it, it really helps me like recapture that whole moment, that whole time frame. But it's also hella like therapeutic, like where it's like I feel like it puts me in a good mood, like yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? And some days it doesn't. It's funny. but that's why you don't. That's, that's what so for me, funny. I don't wear it out. Yeah, like yeah. like I don't wear it out when it comes to that. Like that to me, like I said, it's a it's a strict vibe. So I'll be like, oh, I was pop, feeling that. Some Bay Area shit. So I, was I remember this, this yesterday. Like, but yeah, I'm it's feeling weird. this today. Music, it's music is it's therapy, yo. Real talk. So and what what was it? Because it took for a long time. I listened to like the same things over and over, and they kept that same sort of identity. But more recently, it's like one day it just like was different. Mm-hmm. So that was interesting too. Like so, that's what's going on with my music too. Like, 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 like you're you're over it. <laughs> not over it. Just different. Just like you said, just taking it in from a different perspective. And yeah, from, yeah, a from way. a different perspective. And it just like kind of happens like out of nowhere in a sense. That's just like also like music is so weird because it's like also. When you hear a song that you know is a classic and then they play it the fuck out on the radio, mm-hmm. you don't ever want to hear it for a long time. You and then when don't. you finally you had your fill of it. Yeah. Like but again, then, like the same time. But then after food, enough time passes you want it and again. you go back to it again, you're like, yo, this was really fire. And yeah. it was on the radio. This like you know what I'm saying? And you kinda catch a little vibe from it too, like, oh shit, like this song schmack. Yeah. And <laughs> and this food slap. Like. Same shit. 
That's pretty fucking dope, though. Shout everybody. out to the shout out to the tangent about music. You know what I'm saying that we went on right now, but it's all related. You know what I'm saying? You Knowing about podcasts, we're moving to cool. So look, we're gonna go ahead and talk, ch- jump into the to the last topic, and it, it, it's really pl- pretty simple. It's really just not really a topic for us to discuss as far as like any form of uh, a, 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 I would say like criticism of it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because really, it's just like it's really like a real natural thing. Like so. I was watching a Vlad interview the other day. He recently talked to Lil Boosie. And when he talked to him, Lil Boosie talked about, I think, I believe, getting locked up and his house getting foreclosed on. Right. And when his house got foreclosed on, he learned a valuable lesson, he said, because he realized, he goes, there's a difference between a mortgage and just buying it off the bank and then owning it eventually. You own the house, but you don't really own the land, so to speak. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? Because if you live in, like... It like where we're at right now in, in neighborhood and in residential neighborhoods and places that have been built, mm-hmm. you know, you have to kind of, in, in a sense, you know, that you go by what it is, like who really owns that, you know right. what I'm saying? So he basically so there said... There's a difference between people owning the land that the house is built on and mm-hmm. owning the house itself. Exactly. Mm-hmm. He didn't know that. I didn't really know that neither, yeah. to be honest with you. Because that's why you pay, pay a property tax, correct? Because mm-hmm. you have to pay taxes to like basically use that piece of land. I believe so. Now, don't quote me on this. Me you know, neither. <laughs> for, all, for all my fucking, uh, you know what I'm saying, out there, tap in and please let us know. Financial advisor. But, like, but look, more or less what clarify. I got, the gist from it, the gist that I got from it was basically he said, you know, the next time that he went around to getting his house, by getting his dream house that he wanted, he said he went and bought the property first. The land. He bought the land. Mm-hmm. So he actually owns the land. He said once he bought the land, then he spent his money and he had the house built on that land. And he'll and now um, he's buying the land next to his land. Mm-hmm. And then the the land, land next to it. Yeah. So, so yeah. to me, like to me, that's very important. That's kind of a goal of mine. I want to eventually own land like that to where I can build my dream house. And because I, I want to compound. Right. And I want to compound because I, I want to. Um, I want to make sure that my family always got somewhere to stay. All my family, any of them, if they mm-hmm. ever need to, whether it's just for a little temporary or if you just fucking you know you guys want to live with me, whatever. Yeah. I don't care. You know what I'm saying. Have it's a compound, yours. yeah. Have a compound, and 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 own it though. Like own the property, the land. Have the house built specifically to what I want. Like right. you know, I get to sit down there and I know I know what I want, and um, shit like that. So that's kind of a goal. Cause I want to have I want to have farm animals. You feel me? I want to have motherfucking. <laughs> would you work the land, dude? I would. I would work the land, but I also have people on there that because if it's a lot of land, you're gonna yeah, need a lot of you help. You definitely need help. So I would work the land, and it all depends. Really, it all depends on how financially secure I am. You know what I'm saying? Because if I'm if I'm if I'm like good enough to where I could retire and just live, mm-hmm. then yeah, I would. You know, I would definitely tend to the land. That's that would be my life. You know, and mm-hmm. be around my family. You know what I'm saying? And then still make money doing some other shit, but maybe stuff from home, like you know this or whatever, right? Yeah. But at the end of the day, um, yeah, that would that would be the goal. You know what I mean? To own the property, own the land. And you would have more control in of your time and financially be free as well and that's what I think yeah I think I think everybody just wants to get to that point somehow maybe not the fucking things that you're passionate about yeah the property and shit like me but everybody has their own idea of what they would want to do eventually to be comfortable and um and um what's it called you know make you know retire and the ideal you know that ideally what they would want so that's mine you know what I mean? I, right. So I, when he was talking about that and he was talking about the owning, owning your own shit, that shit's very important. And not only does it just go... See, I wish Ann was here because she's more of the business mind and she probably could have answered all our fucking questions that we mm-hmm. were talking about. So shout out to Ann. I'm going to text her later. Let her know she got the gig. Hopefully she still wants it. She ain't, she ain't moved on to bigger and better things. You know what, <laughs> right. what I'm saying? You know what I mean? But um, yeah, um, you know, that's kind of the topic that I wanted to talk about is just ownership and just owning like things that you're involved with. That, that's yours. just like... You know, a lot of times that we, we, you know, we are okay with just having it mm-hmm. instead of owning or it. Or we're ignorant to the education. Yeah. To that, the and that's the main thing. No, that, and that's the main thing. Mm-hmm. You know? And understand them. Yeah, which is what it is. Because a lot of times, you know, it's like buying something on eBay. It's like, oh, you bought this PS5, the box. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because it's all, spe- it's all, read the it's all little print, formalities people. and little things that, that are in there. That, that if you don't understand in the, the lingo, they hide it with the vocabulary. The and the, they hide it. Yeah, they hide it by saying it a certain way. When, and, but, but you know, if, you're, if you know, then you know, you know the dialect or you know cer- what certain things mean, certain words mean, then you know. You know or I, if you're in a position, hire a lawyer. That can go I think, I think, I think overall, we, as far as just our, our people in general and people in general in our position, you know, in, in our pay, our pay area or whatever, 
that's just general like that's something that people need to know i feel like people like should really try to educate themselves more if they have these goals if you don't have these goals and you're content with you doing that's cool too you know what i mean everybody i'm not here to tell nobody how to live their life but, but if you have this power knowledge is power i see a lot of people that i know that are empowering themselves so shout out to silena she was here. She always comes at least once a year, so I'll probably, we'll probably be seeing her soon because we're getting nice. around that time. She does uh, financial literacy, and she she has her a few businesses. She's an entrepreneur to the max, and she's making moves. So shout out to my homegirl. She's based out of she's from out here, but she's based out of Atlanta, and uh, she always comes and gives us you know our financial excuse me, her financial perspective and, and, and drops little tips and stuff for building your credit and all kinds of stuff. She does it all, you know what I mean? And I'm hella proud of her. And proud of her because that's what people like us need more of, you know, right. in general. I feel like they should, they don't, te- they should be teaching that in school. You dig what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But they don't because, you know, like. Something that's more relevant to life skills. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, they do, but not the school that we're talking about. Where no. Goes to, no. You have to go to, you know, not public school. Yeah. Right. And then, further yeah. Not for the general it's public not, in it's, a sense. It's, it's not a part of general education, which a lot of certain things should be part of general education. Just like math, you know, and your <sighs> ABCs and literacy and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know, those are certain things that should be, I feel like you're incorporated because. I mean, I mean, look. I went to, I went to school. Should that responsibility? That's a whole debate within itself. Should that responsibility go to the public school systems? No, I, I feel like yeah, because even a lot of good, a lot of public school systems, depending on what area code you got, mm-hmm. are fucking awesome. What's your true. zip code? What's yeah. your zip code? Very, very. So, true. so, so, yeah, yeah I feel like it should, it could, and it should. You know what I'm saying? Because those are the, the way they teach in there is different. There's a thing called the banking system, mm-hmm. and it was the way that they developed education in this country, and it was that developed for slaves basically, mm-hmm. and uh, and lower class, and it was developed in a way to teach them how to um, conform. Not ask questions and be more like factory yeah. inline workers. They would they don't teach the 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 entrepreneur mindset. They don't teach the feet the free thought the, the, the free art and expression story. method. They don't teach that. They teach to stifle you so they could shape you to into institutionalize you, exactly basically. to shape you into that. That's why pe- uh, lunch we got to get up and go hurry up and go back. Oh, <laughs> oh the bell rings. We got to run here. We got to run there. It's like. It and yeah, exactly, and mm-hmm. that's that's basically. And see, a lot of teachers don't. I'm not saying that it is now. Some teachers that are more traditional. A lot of those traditions are based in the banking system and stuff. But there's a lot of teachers now that don't do that. At the same time, the teachers could only do what's in their curriculum mm-hmm. and what's set forth by the, you know what I mean. By the state, so, or by whatever. the state or the whatever, however they do it. So that right there is a whole nother can of worms. But yeah, I mean, it's very important because no matter what, you no matter what, you gotta you gotta be able to look outside of the box they're not they don't want everyone to win and they're in any in what any, about homeschooling like because you know that's kind of like i know a lot of kids that like, got i know a lot of people they, that homeschool their kids like, are pretty fucking you smart you shouldn't even send your kids to if you want your kids to have a certain skill set then homeschool them don't sit there and rely on anybody else to teach your kids what you want them to know yes but, that's kind of why i was like yeah. asking no that. I, I get whole, that too that's a, that, those are just interesting debates to me like it's I'm just tough sure when you get when feel, they get one like, style of teaching at school and then another at home and every and you know unfortunately everybody is unfortunate enough to be able to stay at home and school true. their kid all day true. you know what i'm saying so that that's I just like to know people's yeah like opinions if, if you're that. able to like if you if, if if she's married and she got the the husband is working and holding it down and you're able to and that's what you want to do that's cool but make sure that you're able to though don't homeschool and you could barely read your motherfucking <laughs> self like you know what i'm saying come on now like you know know when you can't do something you know know what you could do and know what you can't do you know what i'm saying I'm just saying. <laughs> You're such a jerk. It's I'll keep not, it real. I'm not going to be a homeschooling guy. No, yeah, I could only imagine. It falls on your kid because after going through this whole, you know, pandemic, pandemic yeah. And homeschooling, man, I've learned a lot about everyone else's kids too that yeah. my kids weren't too far off. I'm over thinking that, oh, they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, getting on them, you know, whatever. I'm like, oh, wait, what? These kids ain't doing what they're supposed to be doing either? Like, damn. So there's pros and cons. <laughs> So one of the pros was that, you know, the whole social, you know, bullying and stuff like that doesn't go on. You don't have to deal with none of that stuff at all. Cool. Kids like yeah. that, they were bullied. You know, if they had, you know, issues. You ain't got to worry about going to school and dealing with that shit. Yeah. But the thing is that what they lose is the whole peer pressure of do your work like the rest of us. Yeah. Without that, you know, over the shoulder, then they don't strive to succeed as far as they can. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So depending on your kid, you know, if you have a kid that, you know, is a self-starter, that, you know, doesn't, you know they'll, they'll, they'll thrive. 
Yeah. But if it's one of your kids that I'd rather doing this, my attention's over here. Oh look. They, do, they require, TV? yeah, they require yeah. more attention to, to, you know, what I'm saying. Because or like a group setting in a sense that where everybody's kind of doing. A it, lot of times, kids like that too, suit. though, is because yeah. it's because the the whole the whole idea of the kind of, of the way they're trying to be taught just doesn't. Suit yeah. Them. And that's that. That's the difference. You know what I'm saying? So, so, but I agree. I think that they should teach some sort of just basic financial literacy yeah, in. Elementary school. I think they should start in elementary school. Like it doesn't have to be. I anything think they should too. too. Depth, like, at least entre- but... at least independent entrepreneurship. Like yo, like you know, teaching them how to start businesses and stuff like that. Like everybody don't got to be corporate fucking mm-hmm. gym, but at least like you know what I'm saying. And small businesses are actually the backbone of America. Like so, exactly. Corporations well, like this make a lot of noise. Like they're they're very famous and they have a lot of popularity, but they don't employ a large percent of the population. Yeah. Like. The most of the people, most of the people who work, you know, are working class people. They work for small businesses, which I think is what less than five hundred people. Yeah, and it's all necessary, you know. Shout out to everybody with them PPE loans out there. I hope you guys just <laughs> save some, put some money away. You know what I mean? But uh, no, you're right though, and I mean it's all necessary. Everything's necessary, but the thing is, is like this is like. Is it necessary to teach the kids to be like perfect robots, like or tra- attempt to teach them how to be robots so they can work in your factory? Definitely not. <laughs> so I mean, and yeah, no, definitely but, not. But you know, like in other countries, where again, you, the USA is a very individualistic minded culture. Everybody's very independent, mm-hmm. and we always think like our own American dream. Mm-hmm. And in other cultures, they're very communal. It's never about one person. It's about we have to do what's best for the community. Mm -hmm. So they working in teams and kind of doing the same things is natural and more. It makes more sense to them. That's what they believe in because they feel like it's not just about me. And so, yeah, you kind of do have to follow suit in a sense. Does that make sense? Like the discipline is necessary for the community to work. It's definitely different. Right. And it's not just it's not just like a few countries a lot of countries think like that yeah. and we've lived in America our whole lives so we kind of don't realize the concept of the American dream that it's had the impact it's had on our psyche so it's just interesting like so I don't very, know very 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 interesting I don't know indeed. yeah shout out to Lil Boozy <laughs> <laughs> for starting us on this tangent yeah like. I mean but it, it's all related though it's not like we just not you know I mean it all makes sense and yeah, I mean, so that's the idea. Make sure that you guys own stuff. Make sure that you educate yourself, educate your kids, teach them a, a independent mindset to a certain extent, I guess. It's more like a, a, a free thinking, I would say, you know what I mean? Like to where mm-hmm. you embrace stuff, but you don't necessarily got to turn fanatical or I don't know, or, or you know, I, I, I'm, I, 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 don't let it rule your life. Don't let it rule your life. Exactly. Be somebody, baby. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's the Nova podcast, man. Think for man. yourself. Uh, think for yourself. It's okay. I, I think, it's still legal. Yeah. He, he, it, no. No, no, it's not. Mm. You got the microchip in you. It's it. It's over. <laughs> it's a wrap. Don't let me get off into my conspiracy hat and start talking crazy because ah, I start foaming at the mouth like, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, shout out to all my Facebook conspiracy theorists, though. I, it's 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 so wild, bro, to, to see y'all and, and the crazy shit y'all put up. And, and I'm not judging because I probably believe some way out weird shit to y'all that don't make no fucking sense. But y'all be real, real fucking intense. That's all I can say. <laughs> but shout out to y'all though. You know, it's all love, no matter what. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, ain't nobody gonna stop me from being me. It's visually you. So with that being said, it's No Invite Podcast, man. You can find us on Instagram at no underscore invite underscore podcast. Uh, you could also find us everywhere that your favorite podcasting platforms, wherever podcasts are streaming, you can find us in there. Just just type in no invite podcast. Also, you can go to our YouTube channel. That's Rebirth Media Films. That's R-I-B-I-R-T-H Media Films with a Z. And you could subscribe there. That's basically right there. I would say that if you really want to leave comments, the two places, the best places to get them to us is definitely on Instagram. So if you follow us on Instagram, you can get under there and you can say whatever you got to say. Or you could go subscribe to the YouTube channel and leave a comment in one of the videos if anywhere in particular, especially if we talk about something that pissed you off. We love it. We, we we embrace the slander. You know what I'm saying? Slander to slander to me is different than slander to you, cause slander to you does does everything to you and does nothing to me. I just want to tell you that I can't tell you. <laughs> that you're not allowed to know. <laughs> just want to let you know that you can't know. Yeah. But y'all already know it is. Know my podcast. Bye.
Thank <laughs> you.